building artificial intelligence from a thousand brains. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Jeff Hawkins, co-founder of Numenta Incorporated. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, Tanya. So what does Numenta do, and what motivated you to start the company? Numenta is an unusual uh, uh, company in Silicon Valley. We have two missions, and um, they're both related to intelligence and artificial intelligence. Uh, our primary mission is actually a neuroscience mission. It's reverse engineering a part of the brain called the neocortex. And so if you came to Nementa, you'd see a bunch of scientists working on, like as if we we're on a university. That's what we do, pure science here, figuring out how the brain works. And our second mission is to take what we learn about brain function and, um, and turn that into a technology, sort of the basis of AI in the future. And the reason I started this company is because um, I fell in love with the problem of how the brain works many, many years ago. And it's actually one of the grandest challenges that exists. Everyone recognizes it, but it's very difficult to work on in most situations. And it's hard to be a theoretical neuroscientist in um, uh, at an academic situation, for example. So we've created um, a, sort of an independent research group uh, that's, that is just purely focused on brain theory. And that's why we started the company, and we've been making great progress. You say that in order to create intelligent machines, we first have to understand how the brain works. So how is what we call AI today different from how our brains work? Well, there's a few things that AI today, which is mostly what uh, deep learning networks or convolutional neural networks are called. They are inspired from some brain ideas many, many years ago, 40, 50 years ago. Um, but um, we've learned so much about how the brain works now, and they really, uh, the brain works on completely different principles than uh, what today's current AI is. Um, so uh, we can talk about some of those principles, but they're really very different. Now, there's another question, do those differences matter? And I'm, uh, that's, our belief is, that's my belief, that those differences do matter. And if you think about the world of AI and machine learning these days, um, uh, they've made tremendous progress, but it's still quite limited. Uh, no one thinks that, you know, today's AI is really intelligent or really is like, you know, those, it's, that's not really there yet. It's, it's solving interesting problems, um, but it's not uh, what we would recognize as an intelligent entity or intelligent agent. And so it's always been my belief that we have to study the brain first to figure that out. And, um, and now that we've made so much progress on how the brain works, I can talk about what those principles are, what is missing from today's AI. Summarize for us, if you will, the thousand brains theory of intelligence and how you use a coffee cup to illustrate the concept. Um, well, okay, the thousand brains theory of intelligence, I'll have to give you a little bit of a background. So if you look at a human brain, uh, mostly what you would see is the big wrinkly thing around the outside. That's the neocortex. It's about 75% of a human brain. So our focus is on that organ. It's not the rest of the brain. And that's the organ of intelligence. And the thousand brain theory is a discovery, really. It's not a, it wasn't, a, we thought this, we discovered this, is that most people thought about, okay, well, what does the neocortex do? And one way to look at that is it builds a model of the world. Like everything you know, everything has to be stored in the neocortex. So how your job works, how microphones work, how computers work, how language works, everything. And, um, and the typical way of viewing that is, okay, it's, it's the, your brain has this one model of the world. What we discovered is that, the brain has thousands and thousands of models of the world. It's, it's, it's not one model, it's distributed actually over about 150,000 different models. Uh, so the neocortex is divided into these little columns or about a millimeter in diameter. And each one of those, there's 150,000 of those, each one of them is learning a complete model of some part of the world. It's, it's, like, it's like there's a whole bunch of little, um, little learning energies in your head. So the thousand brains uh, theory of intelligence says, hey, you know, we, it, it, that's, once you understand that, then all of a sudden, all these kind of mysteries become clear. How does designing AI in this way help AI to actually be more flexible and generalized? Well, we, we, we're just starting to do that. There's a series of principles we've learned about the brain. Um, I'll me just tell you one, of, I'll just I'll focus on one first. Everything that, uh, how we learn about the world and the models we build in our head are all based on movement. That is, we learn by moving. We, if I want to learn a new building or a new house, I have to move through it. If I want to learn a new object like a coffee cup, I don't have my coffee cup here, but if I want to learn a new object like a coffee cup, I have to, here's a, here's a, a thing of wipes. 
I have to like put my fingers over it and move it, or I move my eyes over it. So it's, we call that a sensory motor model. And if you think about it, how could you learn the structure of the world without moving? You really can't. You have to move through the world or the structure of the world. Today's AI basically has none of that. Today's AI is like, here's some pictures or some images or some patterns that are static. And we try to train the systems to recognize that. But the brain works by movement. And, and, and once you understand how it uses movement to build the model of the world, you, feel, you say, oh my gosh, if we're going to build real intelligent machines, they have to work like that. Um, it's, it's sort of a fundamental aspect of what it means to learn about the world. So we have, we have a series of things like that. That's one really big one um, that we say, you know what, if we're really going to build truly intelligent machines, they have to incorporate those properties. They don't have to necessarily be physically embodied like a robot. I, I could have a, a virtual uh, intelligence that lives on the internet and it moves through the internet, right? But it has to change where it is. It has to change its, its sensory input through some sort of internal movement demands. And um, so that's like, those are like some very, that's one very fundamental uh, difference between a brain and today's AI. Do existing AI tools offer what you need to design thousand brain AI, or do you need to develop new computing platforms or software tools to fully exploit the potential? Um, well, let's break that apart. Uh, you don't need new computing hardware to do this, uh, but you, you do need new types of software tools. Um, and nothing dramatically different. I mean, um, we are just starting, we do simulations and we're starting to apply some of our stuff to machine learning techniques. And we have to create our own libraries. We, we, might, um, we might need to, to accelerate things. You might need some uh, non-standard CPUs, but things you might get at PGAs or um, uh, GPUs, that kind of stuff. But it's not like, oh, we have to create for, for now to do what we need to do. We do not have to create some radically new architectures. I imagine in the future, if we go out 20, 30 years from now, that'll change. Um, at the future, when we're really building this stuff and it's a huge business, uh, there will be custom hardware designed to, um, to, to take advantage of the, the unusual properties of how brains work. It's not like a computer at all. But today, we're not, we're not really held back by that today. To what kind of problems and use cases do you see applying this technology? Well, just remember, what we mostly do here is pure science, right? So if you go to the Mentis website, you'll see us talking about you know, brain theories and neocortex and neuron theories and, and how brains learn models of the world and so on. Um, that's been our primary mission, and we're just starting to apply it to machine learning stuff. I'll give you two examples that we've done. One that we did a few years ago, which is uh, the brain all works, it works on temporal temporal time-based patterns, like things are always changing in the brain. It's never static. And so we, we took some of these things we learned about the brain, about how they learn sequences, and we've made some interesting um, anomaly detection technology. And so anomaly detection is in streaming data. So if you have a data coming off a machine or a computer or a windmill, how do you know by looking at the time-based patterns, is it changing, is it, is it healthy or not? So there's several companies have licensed that technology. There's another company called Cortical IO, which is based on uh, doing uh, uh, language understanding based on some principles they, uh, they adopted from us. That's a really cool company, cortical.io. And, um, and now we're starting to work on things in, like if you look at traditional deep learning networks, uh, which have been very successful, they have some failures. Um, they're not really good at uh, handling noise and they also, you can easily fool them. And so we're working on how to, how to take brain technology that we've learned about how neurons represent information and infuse that into uh, sort of classic deep learning networks to make them more robust um, and more reliable. Jeff Hawkins, co-founder of Nementa Inc. If somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? Well, you should go to our website, nementa.com, and it's really simple, but we have a lot of ways you can engage with us. We have an active forum and an open source community. We have a lot of people, there's, there's lots of discussions every day. We have all of our papers, both scientific papers and sort of lay versions of those you can read. There's a tremendous amount of resources we have if you want to get up to speed on our theories and how they're being applied. And you can, and it's easy to figure out how to contact us and, and engage with us. Thanks again. And find more of my interviews right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic or go to my website, tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.